Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown Jr., Sandra Bland, Eric Garner, Natasha McKenna, Tamir Rice, Philandro Castile, Alton Sterling, Betty Jones, India Kager, Freddie Gray Jr., Jordan Davis, Dominique Fells, Raya Milton, Walter Lamar Scott, Anton Rose II, Atiana Coquise Jefferson, Michelle Cassell, Elijah McLean, Daniel Prude, Ahmad Aubrey, Brianna Taylor, George Floyd, and my cousin James Bryant. Don't forget to say their names. <laughs>up everybody and welcome back to krs tv this is your boy kenny now remember subscribe 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 to my channel and click that bell so you can get notifications every time i drop a video also follow all the information i have in the description box as well as the comment section also like this video comment on this video and share this video now before i get started with this review let me send a shout out to metro health dc if you are in the dmv area and you're looking for quality health care reach out to us at metro health dc the number is in the description box as well as a link to sign the form so you can actually apply for um for services with metro health dc also let me give a shout out to the gmhc which is the gay men's health collaborative if you're in the dmv area and would like to get tested for hiv reach out to the gmhc crew for a home testing kit you can have the kit mailed to you or you can call and make a same day appointment and have the kit um, and actually come to our location to pick one up. Also, if you're interested in PrEP, which is HIV prevention, reach out to us for the GMAC crew for that as well. Also, if you're a fan of KRS TV and would like to become one of my Black Diamonds, subscribe to my Patreon today. Black Diamonds, because in darkness we still shine. For $5 a month, you get all of my YouTube content as well as videos that will be specifically for the Black Diamonds. And some of those videos I will be sharing on YouTube so my YouTube family will get an idea of what the Black Diamonds is all about. Also, check out my YouTube partner, BK WorldTube, which is the Black Netflix. You get shows like The Oval as well as The Haves and the Have Nots. So after this review, click that link in my description box and comment section to check out BK WorldTube. Now, this is Queen Sugar Season 5, Episode 6, and the name of this episode is May 27th, 2020, a day that none of us will ever forget. And this episode was a very heavy episode because it deals with the aftermath of what happened with George Floyd. And you just really see everyone in the cast dealing with it in their in their own way so i'm not going to go in order so um first i'm going to start with nova nova after hearing about what's going on with george floyd because it's all on the news she does this spiritual meditation and prayer um, and she pretty much sets up a recording, you know, for her True Papers site, 
and she says the names of all of the ones that we've lost due to police brutality and then she just breaks down and I can pretty much say I knew from this situation this is what's going to start a rift between her and Calvin because not only is Calvin a white man but Calvin is a former police officer um and we see that she has a scene with Calvin where um, they go back and forth and she pretty much says that she, cause she's going to do her part to make sure that George Floyd's murder is not forgotten. And then he notices she's reading a book on lynchings and immediately I thought of Strange Fruit. Um, I recently um, did a review of the movie United States vs. Billie Holiday and um, definitely check that out if you haven't. Um, but you know, I immediately thought of Strange Fruit, you know, and how these these people were wearing su their Sunday's best to watch people either be burned alive or to be hung by trees. That this was a celebration that they were taking away black lives. And why that song Strange Fruit is still prominent as of right now, because even as of right now, legally, they still have the right to lynch black people. You know, there's been an anti-lynching law that's been introduced, but it still hasn't passed. Um, and pretty much, you know, Nova was hidden on the fact that black people die hanging from trees. Cops are trained to protect themselves and each other before civilians. Because there was, not only was there a, a cop that killed George Floyd, but three others stood by and watched, and they are just as guilty. And then later on, she asks him, do you feel ashamed? I mean, we feel shame when the culprit is black. I just want to know, do you all feel that? And then we see later on that um, uh, Calvin's daughter, Courtney, joins them, and he pretty much admits, I feel disgust. But as far as that, you know, I don't feel anything other than that outside of it because it had nothing to do with me. Um, and then Courtney was like, well, you know, he didn't do anything. But then that dang on Nova drove it home. She pretty much says, you know, it's a and pretty much. Um, Courtney also mentioned that, yeah, this is a collective conscious in the eyes of white America. Um, and then, like, Nova just hit it home, was like, you know, black actions is a collective endeavor. When, when a black person does this, they immediately label us that. But they don't do that with our achievements. But any mishap or misstep we make, we're pretty much put in this box. And that the fact that you don't feel anything, I mean you know, outside of the fact that it had nothing to do with you, this is the side effects of white supremacy. This is why so many black bodies are 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 taken away and there's not being much change to change the actual structure of the law and how the way the law is governed in this country. Because white supremacy has become systematic. And then we actually see that later on, they're having dinner, um, Nova, Calvin, and Courtney. Uh, pretty much, Nova is talking about her article that it's going to be about the bystanders who watched. And Courtney, Courtney is very sharp, you know, because she says that, yeah, because their, in their innocence constitutes the crime, you know. And she said, yeah, Jimmy B. And... And like Calvin was like Jimmy B, and she's like, and then Nova was like James Baldwin, and that's exactly who, what you should call him. I was like, you better get her together. I mean, because we know that she's um, she's identified with these authors, and you kind of give them names, but she says no, say his name, James Baldwin. James Baldwin is a pioneer in our culture, and you need to call him by his name. So I'm glad that Nova corrected her. Um. And then she brings up Calvin. She says that, didn't you tell me that you watched as your fellow officers beat up a black man? And he pretty much says that, yeah, it was 20 years ago. I was a rookie and it was the worst day of my life. 
and it was all over because he stole a candy bar and and he said that yeah i watched as my fellow officers beat this man beat this man up and of course courtney was like dad how could you do that and he says that look i was young at the time i was new to the force and i pretty much asked them why did they do it and they in um his partner told him it's a down payment you know you gotta hurt them while they're young so they know what to expect so this is revealing that this is how a lot of these cops feel that we gotta break them while they're young so we can so they can live in a constant state of fear you know of of the police and you wonder why we got fuck the police and all of these things out here like because it's it's hitting proof that we're a target and that they're targeting us and they're relentless about it. So the same thing hits home with Charlie and Micah because Micah sees it on the news and we all know from season one, Micah has been a victim of police brutality. And this definitely hits him and then we see that um, Micah and Charlie meet up and she immediately goes to hug him. Um, and then like Charlie's like I don't I don't understand this. He didn't even he wasn't even resisting. And Michael says it doesn't matter. Not to them it doesn't. And and pretty much she was saying like, you know, talk to me. You know, regardless it's murder and it's unacceptable. And he says they don't see it that way. Like it wasn't like on the side of the road for me. They did this in broad daylight. You know, the murder of black people is acceptable in this country, and that's a problem. And they both sob, and I, and that was like really, really deep. And then we see later on, Micah's working out, and he's talking to his friend Kev from school, and they see that they burnt down the um, police station in Minneapolis, and he was like, "Yeah, that's what. That's right. They deserve it. That shit need to be burnt down." And that's when Charlie walks in, and then you see that there's there's a divide in the way they're looking at things and, sh and like charlie's like someone could have been hurt or died in that situation you know we can't become what we hate and and then like he's like what are you trying to say mom fight back with love she had to check him love is not a weakness yes it takes a lot of strength to love and for me who's on this journey on this journey of choosing love over fear I realize that love is a very powerful thing, but love is something that a lot of us fear. And it's something that I'm fighting myself. So yeah, love is not a weakness. Love is love love is where the real strength is. Um and she says love is the light to find to find the way. And then she brought up Mother of the King that darkness cannot drive out darkness. But then Micah combated that was like yeah but he also said riots is the language of the unheard and what you're telling me to do is work within a system that's designed to work against us as it always has and she mentions that there's a protest down in city hall and she says are you going to that and he was like i helped plan the protest so we're kind of seeing where they are with that and Later on, we see that Micah has his shirt on. You know, he's about to go to the protest. And and she, and she stops him and he's like, Mom, don't talk me out of this. And she asks, do you have another shirt? And it, does, it definitely comes back to play later. Then, I'm going to talk about now Vi and Prosper. Um, they're both watching the news and we're seeing this affecting them. And right now, Blue is with them because Darla and Ralph Angel are on their honeymoon because they just got married. And that was a beautiful episode last week. Um, and they pretty much talk about the whole situation with George Floyd and the fake, the counterfeit $20 bill. And Vi was like, there were many things they could have done before involving the police. Like, first of all, um, they could have just refused his service. Or, I would have just served him. 
because clearly this man was in dire need to eat, I would have just served him served him a plate. And we saw that I saw I thought that was that was like very pivotal, you know, because it just goes to show that because the police were called, they went to the extreme when the police didn't even have to be called in that situation. And then we also seen that this has really affected Hollywood, you know, because remember he was going to um, create that um, that special um, that special store for for black men as a safe space to deal with, you know, issues that affect black men like police brutality, mental health, many different things. So this is definitely hitting Hollywood to his core, you know. And here it is that. He was going to open his store, but he wasn't able to open it due to the pandemic. And yet he's seeing what's happening to George Floyd. So this is hitting Hollywood extremely hard. Yeah, okay. So then um, we, get a, we get a scene with Vi, Hollywood, and Prosper. Because of the protests, they, are, they pretty much know that riots could possibly break out. So he's helping to border up, you know, Vi's diner. And and she started asking about the real spot because that was going to be the name of um, Hollywood store. And he says that I'm over that right now because right now Hollywood's pissed, as a lot of us were when we saw what happened with George Floyd. And he asked for a hammer and she went to go to the two box and sees that he has a gun. And he then it, it goes to a scene between um, Vi and Hollywood and he lets her know I've had it for a while. And she says, now, you know, I don't live my life by that. You know, guns do nothing but bring violence and death. And I told you how I felt about that. But he let her know that he's had it for a while, you know, before they got married. So she says, you went into this marriage lying to me. Um, and pretty much, you know, Hollywood opens up about the fact this man died and they're doing nothing but replaying that over and over again. But do they talk about the kind of life he had or his family? And she says that he was like, you know, as far as I feel, they can bring it as far as I'm concerned. But if they take me out while I'm protecting my family, protecting you, protecting Prosper, protecting Ralph Angel, Charlie Nova, and, and Blue, and all of us, so be it. Because I would rather die knowing that I was a black man who loved and knew what love feels like. I was like, wow. That was powerful. Extremely powerful. And then we can see that it, this has really affected Hollywood very deeply. Because we see next week, he's going to be drinking and all kind of shit. So this has really hit Hollywood to his core, as it did all of us. Um, and he says that, you know, like I see George Floyd calling out for his mother, you know. And how is it that a grown black man, the only one to protect you is your mother, and she's passed on. So you know this definitely hit core for him because he just lost his mother. And they see that George Floyd calling for his mother, you know, within the last of those 17 minutes before he died. Just shook me to my core. Which is why I chose to do it this way because I am a black man who just like any other black man could be a victim of that as well. And it's important that I use my voice to promote change and to also choose love over fear. So that was that was really powerful and that that just spoke to me on so many levels. Seeing where Hollywood how Hollywood has responded to George Floyd is exactly how a lot of us responded like it seemed to me that no matter what good we do in this world we're still going to be seen as as people who can be killed or slaughtered and like it's the norm it's no different than when billy holiday was singing strange fruit in the 1930s and 40s it's still the same system 
and it's still the same mode of thinking. And this thinking is not only evil, but it's inhumane. Now I'm going to talk about Ralph Angel. Now, Ralph Angel and Darla are on their honeymoon. They're at the beach, and, you know, she up there giving him the red light special, and I was here for that. You know, it was beautiful seeing them celebrate their love. And here it is, they're in marital bliss, but all this chaos is going on back home. And Hollywood calls Ralph Angel to let him know what's going on with George Floyd and to turn on the news. Now, the whole time, they ain't thinking about no news. They just been enjoying each other. He turns on the news and Ralph Angel immediately breaks down, breaks down in tears. And it was really hard because I was, I was, I, I was getting teary out at that scene too, because it, it's like, it's sad that they are still killing us as they did back in slavery. And it's like, nobody is really paying attention to that. Like, for example, we have what's currently going on with Asian Americans being being victims of of, uh, you know, of of brutality. But let's not forget. Um, we we have always been a victim of it, and it's not to neg negate that what was happening to Asian Americans is not important. It is. But. It's a wake up call to them that you're a minority just like we are. So the Asians need to come together with the blacks instead of just making money off of us and actually form a real movement that will promote change for humanity. You know, the Asians, the blacks, the Latin community, we can be a powerful force. And I think this is what this situation is calling for. And pretty much uh, after what ha after the fact that um, Ralph Angel now knows what's happening with George Floyd, um, Darla also knows now, and she's pretty much saying that she wants to get home to Blue, and really right now Blue has no idea what's going on because they've been sheltering him. Um, she's like, I don't want my son to grow up in a world that hates him. And, of course, you know, Ralph Angel's like, but, you know, I understand that, but we on our honeymoon. You know, we right here at the beach, you know, there's people who, you know, why can't we be like other people who just enjoy vacations and not have worries? And Darla said, yeah, and those people ignore reality. And she says that right now, I just want to hold our son. I want to know that he's okay. So they decide to go back. And while they're going to get gas, they meet this dumbass white agitator who's talking shit like, you talking about Black Lives Matter, <laughs> shitting all lives matter, and all this shit. And then he starts going in, cause, and she's like, well, what about all lives matter? And Darla was like, um, I think it's stupid and redundant. And he's like, oh, so this one got him, so you got one of those mouthy ones, huh? And... Ralph Angel was ready to rock his damn head. And I would say Ralph Angel would have beat the brakes off his ass. Um, and then he says that, you know, y'all talking all this stuff about black lives. Like, that man should have just complied with the police. He got what he deserved. Ralph Angel stood up to old boy and was like, see, your kind is going extinct. So... Pump your damn gas if you know what's good for you, punk ass. I was like, <laughs> that's how you combat hate. Because that's exactly what he represented. He represented hate. And he was an agitator. He wanted to start some shit. But at the end of the day, bruh, Ralph Angel would have whooped your ass. So you did the right thing by pumping your gas and moving the fuck on. Because ain't nobody got time for that. We don't need nobody in, in the way of progress. People and their damn prejudices get on my nerves. So then we see this powerful scene where Darla and and Ralph Angel have a conversation with Blue. Um, and he shares that he heard about Mr. Floyd and he's seen like Black Lives Matter on TV. And he was saying, but don't all lives matter? And Ralph Angel's like, yeah, 
But until they realize that black lives matter just as much as their lives, then it's black lives matter. I'm like, there you go. There you go. Because I even combated that where I was posting black lives matter on social media and people's like, well, don't all lives matter? Uh, yeah, but clearly... Black lives are the ones who are still being lynched. Black lives are the ones that are still being attacked and killed by police for no fucking reason. So if all lives matter, why is this only happening to black people? I mean, I agree all lives matter, but all lives matter should be a form of practice. It should be a system and it should be a way of conducting things. But, that, but somehow that doesn't trickle down when it comes down to black lives. So until there's an equilibrium and we have a system that's fair and we all have an equal share of the pie, Black Lives Matter is still on the table. And pretty much they, they open up to him that, yeah, we, you know, the world is full of good people and good things and we and you're smart and we want you to really live a life where you can enjoy the best that the world has to offer you. But you also need to know that this world is also filled with bad people and bad things. So they let them know as a black man, you have to be extra careful. You know, you know, when you see the police, don't run. But he's like, but what if I, and you see that blue starts to cry and he's like, but what if I didn't do anything? He said, he's like, it doesn't matter. You know, the most important is that you stay alive. And that you do something special with your life. Um, and she, and they said number two. Like one is don't run. Second, you call me and your mama first if something happens. And we see that they all are emotional and they all hug blue. That was a very powerful scene. And I have to say Ethan Hutchison. That truly is a golden star. He is a great actor. And I just see nothing but great things for him in the future. He is really playing this role of blue and it, it was just it was a really beautiful scene you know that blue is finally getting a real dose of the reality of black people in america and it was right that it came from his parents and that and that's a conversation that all of us in black families need to have with our children to let them know the kind of world we live in and know the challenges and the obstacles we face as being black men in America. Then we get the protest, you know, everybody's chanting no justice, no peace. And we see that Nova, Courtney, and Calvin are there protesting. Micah's protesting and he looks over and sees that Charlie is protesting as well. So we see that Charlie's actually listening to Micah because Micah did make a good point that a riot is a way to spark to spark you know to spark a voice for people who are unheard. So that was very powerful. So I have to say this was a very heavy episode, which y'all can definitely tell by my tone. It di it deeply affected me, and also I want to say. You guys should definitely check out Trey Floyd Productions and actually purchase this um, DVD to the play before Black Lives Matter, which really goes into the effects of police brutality and how it affects black families and how it affects black people in different ways. So, yeah, definitely um, check out um, TreyFloyd.com. Also, subscribe to Trey Floyd um, TV. He's got some amazing shows that are about to premiere. And also, um, Love, Sex, and Marriage Season 3 is going to be premiering. And so, as of right now, get your subscription right now at TreyFloyd.com. So, uh, that's what I have, y'all. If, um, if I missed anything, get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. So, until next time, everybody, take care.